Hi Floss Tube, it is Helen D. I'm back with another tutorial and today we are going to make a round ornament with a cording hanger. So this is a, I guess you'd call it a flat finish. Um, round ornament, round ornament. Um, I like doing these, they're quick, there's no sewing involved, um, they're really easy. So I will walk you through how I do them. Um, this is one I made last year. Set that aside. So this is the one I'm going to start with showing you how I get it on this circle. Um, I have one of these which is a circle template. This one is by Westcott and I got this on Amazon and if they still have it available I will put a link down. They also sell, Fiskars sells one sometimes you can find in craft stores. Um, so this has everything from 7 eighths of an inch to 3 and a half inches circles. So typically I start with this. <laughs> if I can find one that's the right size, fantastic. My job just got easier. This one, I happened to, my job got easier. So I hold this down on my piece, which hopefully you can see until I find the circle size I want. I know that it's three inches. Maybe it's this big one. See that one? I know you probably can't see was a little too tight, but this one up here, which was three inches, was going to be perfect. So it will give me enough room to kind of not squish everything and still see. If none of these are the right size, I use this guy. <laughs> Compass, protractor, I don't know which one it is, but I use this and I would set it to, you know, oh, I want a three inch circle. If you put it on three inches, it actually gives you a six inch circle because it goes by the half circle. Um, I would do this on a piece of scrap. Usually I use like a file folder or something a little stiffer, make my circle, hold it up to the back in the window so you can kind of see through it and see if that's going to work for you. And then if it does, I use that as a template. But for this one, I need three inches. I like to keep all of my scrap sticky board or mat board because these little pieces that you think, oh, what am I going to use that for? It turns out you can fit a three inch circle on that just fine. So I take my circle or my cutout template if I'm using the compass protractor and I'm just going to trace it on there. This one barely fits, but it fits. And then I know there's my circle. I use my junk scissors <laughs> to cut this out and I found that if you cut kind of cut away some of the stuff as you go it's easier to get the scissors around there. Now normally I would cut two of these, one for the front and one for the back, the same size. With this piece right now, I'm only gonna cut one because, I'll show you in a sec, I found this at Hobby Lobby um, and I know it's meant to go this way but if you turn it it's a tart so my three inch circle is gonna fit right in there and I'm thinking with this particular one I might finish it in this with some trim I want to leave my options open I will have to pull this bow off there's a little hook with some jute it's all just hot glued in there, so that can all come off to get it to be the other direction. Um, I These say they're unavailable online. I don't know if that's going to focus for you, but it does say that they're sold out online. It was $4, half off. My store only had two, or I would have bought more. <laughs> um, so I have my two, typically, my two pieces. Here's some little scraps when I was testing different sizes. I put the trash can out of reach. 
So now I will take my piece. If I'm making a pillow ornament, I usually put interfacing on the back because when I'm stuffing, I don't want to snag my stitches. Because I'm not stuffing this, I'm not going to bother to put interfacing on the back. Uh, I'm going to hold this up kind of to the light, which I don't know if we'll see, to kind of center it on there. And then I'm just going to flip it over and cut a bigger circle just around. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is the back. I do want to get all this um, the selvage off just because that's thicker and it's a little harder to sew. So there's my wonky circle. I do like to put some interfacing, some not interfacing, sorry, some batting. So what I do is I take my sticky off. Sometimes easier said than done as we all know. I'll use whatever I have. <laughs> Um, I'll use Warm and Natural. Today I just have a scrap of um, fusible fleece. I'm just going to stick it right on there. Cut that corner off. And then just trim this down. Now for the backing, you don't need to use interfacing, if, uh, not interfacing, batting if you don't want to. If you want both sides a little puffy, you can. Um, that is personal preference. So now I have some cat hair, of course, in my circle with a little batting. So this is going to go on this piece. I like to use these long doll needles. These are the five inch doll needles. I believe I bought mine on Amazon, but other stores carry them. And I like to use um, a button thread, button and carpet thread, because it's a little thicker. I noticed on this one the other day, um, 45 cents. So apparently I have some vintage button and carpet thread. So I'm just going to spin this out a little. It's got a very pronounced holder there, and this one always gets stuck. Take one of my needles. I leave it right on the spool. Take the other side. See, it's going to get stuck. Flip this upside down. And then I just pick a spot, doesn't matter where, and I kind of go back and forth along the edge of my semi-circle, like a quarter inch apart. And that's why I like these dull needles, because you can get a lot on there before you have to move it. Go all the way around. Now you're going to do the exact same thing with your backing fabric. So you're basically making two circles, one on the front, one on the back. These bad boys are sharp, so be careful. Oops, pulled that one out. Almost done. My thread got stuck again. So I go right back to where I started, pull it through, eh, pull it off my needle. These do have a nice big hole, which is nice, except then it does slide off easy. Okay, pull that needle off. So now I have my round all the way around. I take my 
sticky board with my batting, put the batting down against the piece, and then I pull both these threads. I don't really worry about centering it at first. I just pull both these threads to kind of cinch it up and see how it's going to look. Then I can flip it over and move it around if I think it needs it, kind of as I go. And that's actually good enough for me. <laughs> it's pretty good. So then I take a smaller needle, which I just dropped my good one the other day. Okay. Now remember, one of these is still attached, so I'll take the one that's not attached, put it on my su smaller sewing needle, if I can. Get on there. And kind of go like kind of go across and just scoop a little fabric up and pull it tight and then I'll turn it a little and go over here scoop it up and pull it tight and I can get two or three scoops out of that before I run out of thread so then I'll just do another little scoop whoops I did that one too small I'm trying to tie a knot in there poke my needle back through and tie that off cut that one off then I give myself a little bit of thread on the other side. Cut it off the spool, thread it back on my needle. And now we're just going to do that zigzag back and forth until it's nice and tight and centered and how you want it. This is not my usual needle and it's got a smaller eye. So again, I can pull this one kind of, pull it tight, check the front, and just keep flipping back and forth to the front as you go um, to see if it's on there as you want it. It's kind of hard to do with the angle where you can see, <laughs> and I can see, but I'm just going back and forth, dipping in there, trying to hit all the spots on my circle. You can kind of push it around if you need to. Where am I? And then once you think you have them all, or you run out of thread, whichever comes first, you'll just tie this end off the same way. And it's not pretty back here, but no one's going to see it. Alright, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. I might be able to get one up here. Alright, let me tie this off. So I just made a loop and then I go through it, and that one's good. So there's your front. all on its little circle. Uh, I do the back exactly the same. Like I said, if you want to put some padding on, you can. You don't need to. Um, if you use sticky board, I would suggest before you stick the sticky board on, do your thread all the way around. Then stick it in, then cinch it, because with the sticky board in there when you're trying to go back and forth, it's a little trickier. So that's the front. I would do the same thing with the back. Then I have to glue them together. Typically I'm a big hot glue fan, but for these I want them as flat as possible, so I do use the Aileen's. Um, I squeeze them all the way around, squeeze a bunch in the middle. I have a dedicated glue paintbrush, and I really kind of get in there and get it all the way to the edges as I can. I do that on the front, and on the back. Then I stick them together 
and put them under a heavy book and leave them overnight. That's the reason this it takes a while to dry, but I stick them under a book and I leave them overnight. So that's what I did with this one. <laughs> this one has a back. I did put batting on the back. It kind of looks like a tiny macaroon. <laughs> um, so this is all glued together. There's a little bit of a gap on the edges, but I'm going to put cording on so it doesn't really matter. So there's this one. Now, that's my sister. <laughs> Let's talk cording. Um, I learned how to make cording watching Vana, the Twisted Stitcher. She has a great tutorial where she'll show, she shows like three different ways of making cording all in the same video. This one, it happens to be all one color. I typically do two colors. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. Because I like to use the cording as my hanger, I want it a little longer. So when I'm making cording, I have, a cone, I have my cone of white. Um, hold it on one end, like hold it on the top. You're measuring all the way around your piece. And this would be the same for um, like a pillow. You'd go all the way around the four corners. So that's kind of how, that's the circumference of my piece. Because I want a hanger, I will then do like another inch and a half, two inches. I'd rather have too much than too, too little. So I have this length of floss. Then I need to make this length four times as long. So here's one, hold it down. There's two, just keep flipping it over. Three, four. Then I can cut it. So I have one strand of floss one length, wrapped around my piece four times as long. Now I need four of these. If you're doing a multicolor, you need two strands of each color. So here's two of my white. And then for my red, I'm going to use DMC 115. So DMC has these variegated flosses they come in a box. They also do come separately at some stores. They're the low numbers, 48, 51, you know, 121, 125. They're variegated, but it takes a long time before the color switches. I don't actually like to stitch with these because I think it takes too long before the color switches, but they make great cording. Here's a piece, a scrap of one. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it's the green, and it really has a lot of color change in the cording. So I'm going to use this 115 and take two lengths, measure it by my white of that. One, two. Okay, so now I have my floss. Separate them into your two separate colors, your red and your white. Take your first color, get both ends, which are not exactly even and that's fine. Um, just tie a knot right in the end of all, the sh all four strands. Then you take your second color go through the first one. So I'm going into my red. Then I'll take the whites, find the other end, tie a knot. Okay, so now they're connected. Um, to make the cording we use the Krynic cord maker. Some LNS stores carry this, uh, Amazon carries this, Krynic carries this. It also can be used to make fishing lure, I saw when I looked on their website a while ago. Um, I'm going to call my husband in to help video this next part because it's a little hard to see right here. Um, so hold on. Alright, we have our piece of cording with half white, half red. 
I use mine, I have a 3M strip on my cabinet that I use to hold my stuff. And I like these ones with the wire because it's skinnier. So I'm going to take my reds, separate them two and two, and hook them on there. And then I walk back. This is a nice short cording. Sometimes I'm all the way across the room. I take my white, find where the end is, where they're split, put this piece on my hook. It doesn't really matter which direction your hook is. I, I'm right-handed, so I usually put it this way. Then you just turn. You spin, 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 kind of until it gets tight, right? Like it starts out kind of floppy, and then you'll feel the tension tighten up, and you can see right here how much twist you have, you know, in your wire. So once you feel like you have it twisted enough, if you twist it too much, it just gets a tighter twist. Okay, you stop. You pull this off the hook, but you still have to keep it really tight. Once you cross the streams, there's no going back. So you hold this tight, take your hook, hook it on there, and bring that hook back right to where they connect. Then kind of pinch these together a little bit. Use your other hand, walk your other strand over. Again, holding them separate, unhook this one. My stuff's in the way, I should have taken it off. Okay, now that you have them, drop the hook. Let it spin, spin, spin. When it stops spinning and starts to go the other way, grab it. Then I set it down, tie a knot in this end. Okay, last step. Where I just tied the knot, I put that back on my hook, if I can. Okay, now you spin it a little bit the opposite way of how you did it. And that just kind of locks everything in place. Then you can unhook it, and just kind of run your hands down it and you have cording. All right, I hope you guys could see that and it made sense. Again, I will link Vonna's tutorial and she shows a two color, a single color, a color with like a metallic. She shows a whole bunch. She is the queen of cording. So I have my piece. It is more than long enough to do my hanger. I'm just gonna cut off all this stuff on the end so it's out of my way. Because I put a knot in there, we don't need to worry about that coming undone. So to attach, if I am doing a pillow ornament where both sides are squishy and soft, I will hand sew my cording on. When I'm doing a round ornament or a flat, sometimes it's really hard to get your needle in here. So I usually just glue and then I kind of sew to the top. So I take my cording, I fold it, I find the middle. Fold it in half and I find the middle. And then I put the middle approximately on the middle. <laughs> I bring one edge up. I like to start at the top. So I bring one edge up to about the middle. And then I'm just going to put a little glue on. Lay that cording on. And work my way around the circle. So just a little bit at a time. When I'm hand sewing it, I like to use one of the two colors that it is for my thread. Um, so like this one, I might use a white. And you try and get it on there so that the thread you're stitching it on with, it lays right with these different color changes to kind of hide it as much as possible. Um, my glue gun, I think, is a multi-temp. It is a thousand years old. <laughs> Um, and nothing special. Oh, someone did ask last time about this mat. This is a silicone mat that I got on Amazon. Um, your craft store may have it, and it's four glue guns so that if they drip, 
um, it peels right off. This one's getting me all kinds of stringy bits. So again, I'm going to bring this kind of right up to the top. Lay that on. So then both of my pieces are up at the top. The way I like to do mine is I like to put a charm here with the year or a bell or some other kind like this one had holly berry um, that's what I like to do and that kind of really secures where you're gonna hang it so I take a piece of string um, thread I did it so it's a loop on one end kind of right eyeballing it where they go in the middle I pop in the back see these are tight I'm glad I glued this one I go through the back one just a little bit so that I can pull it up and loop whoops and loop start my fabric loop start my thread which pulled out so I'll go back through it and pull it up there and then it's nice and secure then I crisscross these and I'll kind of come over it and through both pieces so you will see this thread but that doesn't bother me okay so then they're kind of there um, my charms my year charms I found these on Amazon as well and I just searched 2020 charms I'm gonna come over it come through the charm and then back through and I got a pack of a hundred for seven dollars I know they also sell them a lot of sellers will sell them on Etsy so if you don't need a pack of a hundred you can get them that way um, I just get the pack of a hundred and then just share them so I'll go through this a few times just to kind of make sure it's on there good because again that's where the pressure will be when you're hanging it probably one more And then get out of there. I'll take my thread, I'll kind of poke back through where I sewed to get to the back side. Over there. Come most of the way, like make that loop so I can close it off. My string's in there. Get out of there. So I'm gonna go back through there and knot it off. Then if I can this one has some batting on it so I should be able to I kind of poke it in my piece and then back out a little bit and pull it through and that way when I snip it it kind of hides my end right in there so you can't see okay and then the only thing we have left to do is just to put a knot up here to make a hanger. This one's a little on the smaller side. I probably could have given myself a little more cording, um, but that's fine. So I just tied a, tied a good knot, and then I like to cut these off so that they're the same. Kind of makes them a little fuzzy on top. I did the same with this one. This one's a little longer. Again, I would have liked this one a little longer, but you get what you get. So I could have just made my cording a little longer for this one. So that is it, a round ornament with cording. Um, I hope this was helpful. I'll put those links down below. Um, I can put links to the Amazon um, charms as well, or if you just search 2020 charm or 2021 charm, um, you'll get like a thousand options to pop right up. So thank you so much. Bye.